Barça. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Hugo Manguinhas, I'll be uh, speaking about the work we did um, at European European projects in uh, modeling and exchanging uh, annotations. Uh, I'll start by um, um, questioning why are annotations uh, useful. So for the user is the means to contribute uh, with, their, with their knowledge, but also to discuss and share uh, the knowledge with other users. But for cultural institutions, it's a new way and opportunity to um, improve the overall quality of the, of the data, contribute to, to a better semantic description, and also link to the web of data. Um, here is the, 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 annot the annotation landscape. So the projects that have been working somehow touched the, and has some work related to, uh, to annotations. Um, I'll not go through all, all of the projects, but um, I'll highlight, for example, the DM2E project with scholarly annotations, where the, 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 the Pandit uh, toolset was used, and I'll speak about the Pandit uh, later in the, in the presentation. Uh, Sealing Media, which is a Dutch uh, project um, focused on, on expert annotations and called niche sourcing. Uh, which developed a creator tool, a uh, very interesting tool, and also has some capabilities for uh, assigning trust to the, to the annotators. Uh, so it's a very interesting project. Uh, also the European Creative Project, we, where we um, developed the first version of our annotations API. Uh, and then the two other projects that I will speak in this presentation, which is version three, where we did the, the round tripping with this tripping. Um, uh, of annotations uh, within the history pin platform and the uh, European sounds which has the wide uh, range of uh, user scenarios uh, for annotations and also all where all the development uh, is, is, being, uh, is being done. Most of these projects, well the, 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 the European sounds project is still ongoing so this work is still under development. Um, here I'm going to explain the scenarios that we have defined in the European Sounds project. Um, so in the European Sounds project, uh, a, a user can annotate a cultural heritage uh, object, in particular the information describing the, the object, uh, the contextual information, so uh, agents, um, subjects, uh, places, uh, and also the media resources representing the objects, so images, sounds, uh, video, in order to uh, comment and discuss with other users, um, also tag with terms from controlled vocabularies and uh, other data sets, uh, relate them together with some sort of meaning, uh, complete or correct information, uh, but also uh, one thing is to favor or moderate an annotations. So that's, uh, for example, moderating annotations to um, block uh, uh, abuse from, from, uh, from users and the favoring just to have a kind of relevancy to the, to the annotations so that the key users can actually say that an annotation is more interesting than the other and those will be uh, favored in the, in the display, so will be shown and highlights in the, in the, um, in the client and, uh, or in the client application in the port. Here is the overview of the architecture defined in InSounds. Um, it's a bit, well, Complex. I will not go through all of it. I will explain that in the top we'll have the client applications. We, uh, in terms of client applications, we'll have European platform, which I'll explain later. And at the data provider, we'll have a dependence client, which I'll also explain. The widths, where uh, you can create collections and then use annotations for that for while creating the collections. Uh, and that will be brought to, to European. Also, the European channels. And, together with, with the portal where annotations will be displayed and also users can create annotations. Uh, at the bottom we will have the European uh, um, API which is the back end, which is where the, the, the annotations will be stored and, and, and pulled in. Um, and in between we'll have a couple of software so we'll have both the back end of, of client applications interacting with, directly with the, the annotations API but also some sort of round tip events that will be able to harvest the, 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 the annotations from a couple of platforms and um, 
ingest them in the, in the, the annotation uh, server through the API. Um, a core part of this work is the modeling of annotations to allow that uh, annotations will be interoperable across platforms. Uh, for this, we adopted the W3C uh, web annotation data model, um, which was presented uh, in SWIFT last, last year. Um, this uh, uh, specification is, is, is quite, quite recent, but was a spin-off from a community um, a specification uh, um, from the open annotation uh, data model, which the last version is from 2013. Uh, the web annotation data model is recent, the, initially started in the late 2014, and the latest update was made last, last month. Um, it is based on, on RDF and uses the JSON-LD as a, a format for serializing the annotations. JSON-LD is just a, um, a flavor of JSON that allows you to represent RDF data. Uh, it offers a very, very simple uh, way of exchanging um, annotations, but still its, it's, it's simplicity allows for uh, um, a very, um, a very, allows to design also complex scenarios for, uh, for annotations. Uh, and this is one of the, the core, of it, core interest of, of, of this model. Um, it's still in the early stages, and this I mean the web annotation model, not the open annotation model, which is quite adopted and is uh, uh, widely used. But the web annotation is still uh, ongoing discussions on how specific things are, are going to be modeled. Also, because this model is the idea is that it will go towards a recommendation status from W3C, while the other one will contain uh, will, will remain as a, uh, a community. Uh, as specification. So what does the web annotation model define? So it defines uh, a reified, so annotations become a reified relation. Um, the, they express a, a body that will, so will have a, a target so that is the, something that I want to refer to, while the body is what I want to express about that, uh, that thing. Um, also, we have a motivation that will express the intent of the, the annotation. And this is the, the, the simple form of, 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 the, of, of one annotation. Um, <clears throat> now I will explain what, what the work in, in, in History PIN was, was done, uh, starting by explaining what is History PIN. So History PIN is a platform where uh, users can um, uh, uh, made available photos of, of their local history and also geotag it and, also the, and then discuss with other users uh, part of their, their local uh, history. So you can also tag it, so you can both comment and also tag um, in history pin. So here in terms of modeling, uh, how do we express it in, or how we, did, we, we expressed it in, um, in our work. So uh, we have uh, uh, here ADM provided CHO. Uh, uh, we're using here the, the ADM model. Um, so here is, is the, um, the where I of, of, the, the, um, of, the, of the object. In this case, it's, um, it's, 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 a, it's a photo of, uh, from World War I. Um, here an annotation will be expressed as, uh, so here the target will be the, the provided CHO. Uh, the body will be the literal uh, of, of the tag. In this case, it's a, it's a plain literal with the motivation of, of tagging. Um, to express now a, a comment, um, you have the same, the same annotation uh, pointing to a literal which will be the comment itself and then the commenting expressing that the intent is to comment and not to tag. Uh, now I'll continue by uh, explaining uh, the annotation API. Um, the annotation API uh, it also adopts a W3C um, standard, the web annotation protocol, which also is also very recent and comes from the, the web uh, annotation um, uh, community. Um, its, it's backend is developed uh, using uh, MongoDB and also Solar. Um, the alpha, alpha version that you can, can play with it is available at this location. It's still, uh, this was, was released uh, one week ago, so it's very recent. 
um, and we see working on, on new features for, for, this, um, for this API. Here you can, can see um, the, the methods that the, the API um, has available. So you can see here, for example, the, the crude methods that um, the web annotation protocol defines. So you have the normal uh, post uh, for creation, put for edits, delete if you want to delete, even though the actual deletion will not happen, we'll just deprecate the, the annotation. We'll continue to store the, the annotation in the server and also the, the normal get. Uh, you also see here some, some duplicate, seemed as duplicate methods, because to be aligned with our other APIs, we use format extensions. So other, the other APIs, which are a, a bit older, they use the format extension, while uh, in the protocol, uh, this can be defined using the accept header. Um, also, we have uh, auxiliary, auxiliary methods for, for developers, because um, in many cases, you want, a developer just wants to make a, a, a create a, um, an annotation with the, with the plain literal. So we'll use just the parameters and, and the server will recreate all the model uh, inside. Also because a lot of the information, I'll explain it a bit later, can be deduced from the actual communication. Uh, so it can be very simplified. So this is mostly for, for, for helping. Um, uh, developers. Um, we also uh, added, and this is not part of the web annotation protocol, uh, search methods because you need to pull, in, pull out the, the, the annotations to display in the, in the portal. So we needed to have these methods and we have, have, have defined, them, defined them. We also were in a collaboration with the, with the, with the community uh, and some of the things that we already implement are actually will likely go into the to the um, to the standard. Um, I'll explain how the, the the exchange of annotations was done for the for the particular case of history pin, which uh, may be applied for other um, for the other platforms. Um, here we have uh, history pin uh, APIs, the JSON API. Uh, also the annotations API using the web annotation protocol. So we developed this round trip in demand, which is a, a software that just uh, queries the history pin uh, API, searching for a, a particular time span, and then uh, it makes some work. So for example, um, he needs to make some checks. He also makes some normalizations of, of the, the where eyes because in history pin, when we share our data, the data will come with a URL, so the actual uh, link for the page, and we need to convert it to the, to the URI because it's the way that we, we represent. Of course, these URIs uh, through content negotiation, you can then be redirected to the page or to the actual data you know, following the HTTP 14 uh, specification. So here, uh, and besides this, also the, the, the round trip in Neiman needs to understand if the annotation that was retrieved for history, for history pin is actually a new annotation or a, a change uh, happens because uh, this actually, it's, it's not, in, in, in their system they cannot tell if actually there was a, a, an update or not, so we need to check if, there, if it exists. Um, and this is part of the work of the round trip in Neiman. So here you have the normal uh, uh, pool of, of, of history pin and, and put it in, in a, um, the annotation server. But also we have envisioned the, the, the going back so that, for example, if there is a, um, an annotation created in a portal for a record that um, history pin also has in their platform, they could display, for example, the, the tags and also the comments so you can, could have the two the, the discussion going on in the two uh, platforms. This is not actually being done. There's only, uh, for now, only one direction is, is being, uh, is, has been being implemented, but it's envisioned that, that the, the data will also go in the opposite direction. Uh, this is what I already explained. Uh, in terms of modeling, we have here the annotation. We also needed a way to express where the, um, the actual annotation uh, was created because we would like, to, for example, if you show it uh, in our portal, actually have a link there that, so that they could go to history pin 
uh, and see the annotation in the place where it was originally cre created. So here we captured um, using the, the prop was read from. Probably this is not the best property to, um, to express this information. And we, depending on the, the cases that we'll have in the future with the other platforms, we we'll need to, to, to decide how we will uh, uh, express this information in a more uh, um, normalized and, 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 and a better way. Um, so here we'll have the where, where I, in, the, in the annotations, by the way, we also um, reused the, the local where I, the local identifier for the for the annotation in history pin because they don't have universal uh, identifiers. So we reuse part of the, the identifier when creating the annotation in the server. Um, and this already explained. So how one of, of, of things also that the model allows you is to capture the, the provenance information. So in, in the annotation, we can express, for example, when the user created the annotation, um, which user, and also when, and, and this is actually our use, uh, but you can, can also think of it in a more, uh, um, in a wider perspective. For example, here we use the generated and, and, and by and generated ads to express when the annotation uh, first, the agent that, that um, actually created, the, the, you know, that was used to create the annotation, but also the moment that, in this case, the moment that was sent to, to Europeana. Of course, we can think of this in also other, other, another way. For example, also the software agent to be the annotation API, and then you'll have the, 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 the timestamp of when it was generated in the API and also the, the agent of the actual history pin agent. Uh, but this is, was uh, how we, we use this, um, these properties. Uh, we need to revise this in a, in a better way, probably also uh, since the, the, you can have multiple, multiple um, use of these uh, properties perhaps using, but then we'll also lose the, the actual relation between the generated item and the generated by um, if we do it this way. So we need to think a bit more of, on this, but this is what we needed to express and how we use the model for it. Um, here is an, an, um, uh, an annotation coming for an history pin. Actually, there is a, a bug in, the, in, this, in this, um, this annotation, which is in the serialized by, which should be the agent. Um, and this, uh, actually, you don't check this part because we also don't really uh, use it. Later on, this will actually not be uh, sent to the annotation API. This is now, now being done in round trip, de round trip daemon, but this will actually be done uh, in the uh, um, annotation server using, for example, uh, and this is still uh, um, under uh, discussion, is to use the API key to actually fill in this information. So because when you register for an API key, Normally, you're coming from you, you, you're a, an API developer from a, a, a client application, and you can use that information. If you attach that information to the API key, you can field it in. And also, the, the um, and, and, and the serialized by at also can be uh, um, generated in, in the server, which now is generated in the in the daemon. So part of the work now in the round tip daemon can can go in, 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 uh, in, in both ways, part of the work being done in the European platform on client applications, but also in, in, in the back end and probably in the future, we will not have the need for a, for a, a round trip and daemon special and we are thinking of using, for example, protocols like resource sync to actually do this sort of thing. So to actually implement and, and, and allow for, for the, the, the um, the synchronization of, of the annotation in the two platforms, but we are still a bit away from that uh, possibility, and this is thing, something that we are still uh, um, need to, to, um, to look at. Um, now I'm going to, uh, to explain how um, the work was done with, with Pandit. Uh, Pandit is a, is a semantic annotation tool. Why is it called semantic? because you can uh, highlight a piece of text and create statements 
RDF statements about that, that piece of text. I mean, I mean, text can also be a, an image, a, a portion of an image, anything. Uh, it's available as a, as a, a browser plugin. Uh, here, for example, is the, the Chrome plugin, and you can use it in any uh, web page. But in this case, it's actually um, when using the, the portal. And uh, besides making the statements, you, it, it's now also being adapted to cope with this, um, this sort of tagging that has been defined in the, um, in the, in the, in the scenarios. So here you can, can see the, the available uh, vocabularies. So you have, for example, freebase, you have a general vocabulary, MIMO, MIMO instruments, ontology, uh, Europeana, so this is to, to, to express the linking between, for example, an European object and another object, and uh, also DBpedia. For example, here in, you can see the, the brass instrument uh, DBpedia um, resource, and I'm going to tag this uh, um, resource, the European resource, with uh, uh, the resource from DBpedia. So they pull in from the API from DBpedia using the, the API. Um, how is it expressed? So we have a EDM provides CHO as a target, as, so we have an annotation and as a target EDM provides CHO. Um, the motivation is, is tagging, but in this case we'll have a semantic tagging as a body with a relation, a relation to the concept. This is actually using the, the web annotation protocol with the version prior to, to the 15th of October, which in the new version probably the uh, OA uh, semantic tag will not exist, only via specific resource. Um, so here is the exchange that we have defined with, with Pandit. With Pandit will have both asynchronous, so in this case, if, the, if you can connect, connect with the annotations API, it will connect directly and will store the, the, the annotations uh, and also, also store it in, the, in their server. Uh, but there's also a vision that if the communication will not happen, there can be a wrong trip and demon that will try to identify if they actually, so they actually the, the annotation was stored or not and will make an update if needed or create a new one. Uh, so we have both synchronous and asynchronous behavior in, uh, for, for Pandit. Uh, now, a proposal for metadata and annotations, uh, this is something uh, we have, it's, it's no, not part of the, of the standard, both of the OA, OA and the WA. Um, so when thinking of metadata annotations, and this is what we consider as metadata annotations, it's an annotation that refers to or asserts a statement uh, to the information described in an object, but thinking of uh, in order of completing or correcting, or correcting it. Um, ideally, uh, and like other annotations, um, they should be agnostic to the way they are presented to, in, the, to the, in the user interface, to the user in the, in the interface, must be machine readable, so that annotations, are, and, and this is a core requirement for us, that it survives to uh, the changes to the interface design, because we also have, are now changing our portal, so if an annotation was created in the portal, in, at the moment, if you would not express it in this way, or looking at these requirements, they will lose the annotation in, 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 when you move to, when you shift to the new portal. Um, also allow that they can be use, uh, easily shared also with the providers so that you can see the annotations in their, in their site. And also allow software applications to take further advantage of, of, of this data. So this is our proposal for uh, modeling metadata annotations. So we have the providers here show again the annotation. We have here as a target, we have a specific resource linking to the, um, to, to, um, is linking to a specific resource which then has a selector to selecting the, actually, the actual uh, uh, statement in the, in the metadata that uh, I want to, um, to say something about. Here we define the pundit metadata selector with the predicate and the value and in here the source also uh, linking to the provided CHO. And uh, this is actually similar to what an RDF statement is, but this is following the WA, the WA uh, guidelines. And here is the statement that I want to say about that particular statement in the metadata. 
Here it uses, it uses a tree graph. Why is a graph? So it's a statement, a statement within a graph. Why is a graph? Because it needs to be decoupled from the context of the actual description. Because otherwise, if you would make this suggestion, in RDF, they will immediately be, immediately will be smushed in the same graph, so it will be, become part of the metadata and not uh, in this uh, uh, parallel that will have a suggestion and uh, which is not it's a, su a suggestion, a proposal, and not part of the actual description. And also here, uh, the motivation, this is not uh, defined. I, I could not see one that could actually uh, uh, state the, the intent of this, uh, um, uh, of, of this annotation. We could uh, define this des describing, but perhaps a more specific annotation uh, motivation could be defined. Just wrapping up, this is the last slide. So uh, representing an exchange is something that is still a work in progress. Um, on modeling, uh, the web annotation, um, the web annotation data model still gives a, a good interoperable base, but needs uh, best practice uh, from specific application domains to ensure the consistency when interpreting the, the actual annotation, because you can exchange, but you need to the, the client application to actually interpret it in a consistent way, uh, especially for metadata annotations, which is not uh, something that's not defined. And on exchange, uh, the web annotation protocol also um, has, uh, has just been released, but still gives a, a good base, but there is still a need for, for search, uh, which actually is the roadmap for, roadmap for the protocol, um, but still needs to mature and achieve wider adoption, which is um, still very recent. So this is what I wanted to say about modeling and the exchange annotations in progress. Fascinating, uh, thank you, Hugo.